some people think that you have to have great athletics and you have to have uh, performing arts and you have to have leadership entrepreneurship everything olympiads so hey guys today we have one of the most inspiring student who got into princeton university for the batch of 2024 so hi ananya can you please introduce yourself hi uh, my name is ananya and i'm from noida india um and i am one of the uh, six students from india who was admitted to the princeton's class of 2024 this year amazing so my first question would be when did your journey to study abroad started matlab maine suna hai ki ivy league ke liye you have to build up a lot of leadership entrepreneurship abilities so aapko matlab 9th se start karne na chahiye so did you also start from 9th grade uh i guess i started thinking from 9th grade and started doing some things um that i liked but i wasn't really um doing things specifically only for college admissions i would say got it and matlab aap kaun se school se so did you choose like ib cbsc and did it did it affect your like extracurriculars and did it help you out in building extracurriculars for these elite universities uh so i've been in the same school since nursery it's uh, called mm-hmm. amity international school noida and i did consider changing schools but i didn't so i'm from cbsc board and i uh, have been in the same curriculum since the beginning so how many universities you got accepted to and how many ivy leagues you were considering when you were applying I was mostly focused on uh, the IVs that are need blind or generous with financial aid because I wanted to I needed financial aid uh, to study in the US. Um so I think the major choices that I had were um Princeton, UIUC which is great for computer science, uh UC Berkeley and uh, two uh, two other UCs and Boston University where I got the presidential scholarship. Um yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, oh, I was waitlisted at uh, Duke and Cornell. Awesome, but I, I believe U, UCs don't give scholarship, right? It's yes, so good. those were, I guess, uh, the only places I apply to that um, don't give financial aid, um, and that that's why at the end of it, they weren't really a choice in my <laughs> a decision making process because it was automatically like you know, even though UC Berkeley is amazing, I won't be getting aid, so. you know don't think about it so talking about the financial aid so princeton university is lead line through so even if you apply for financial aid your chances to get into princeton will not be affected so did you get any financial aid uh-huh. uh yes i did get financial aid from princeton and i applied with aid so generally if you need aid definitely apply for it because then um some universities won't let you say later on that no i can't afford to pay princeton will um at any point if your financial situation changes you can request for aid later on as well and one thing i would like to add on is that harvard and mit are more generous in terms of financial aid so let's say for any of those need blind schools or need aware schools your annual salary or family annual salary is less than $65000 for harvard and mit they will even maybe cover your flight ticket or maybe your housing and pretty much everything it's 100% covered but for princeton they might say that you may have to pay the housing expenses and also flight ticket but if you email them that you cannot even afford that much also then they might be able to cover as well so remember to do that so talking about your profile that got you into princeton so you got a 1590 score out of 1600 in sat that's like highest all over india matlab kisi ki 1590 bahut mushkil se aate hai so how you made it possible i wasn't expecting it personally when i came out after giving the test i was like i don't know how it has gone i might have to reappear for it so um i guess the key is to be well prepared and give lots of mock tests because that really uh helped me improve my performance and i only had to give the sat once to get the score i wanted wow and another key point is i believe if you wrap it up in 11th grade then it becomes easier then you don't have to stress out in 12th grade right definitely so if you can if you're already like if you're in 10th grade 11th grade uh start planning right now and start like this is the right time if you want to give the october attempt and you're already in 11th you can start studying from like from this point um and then if you get some of the testing over and right now you'll have significantly less burden remaining on your shoulders uh, in 12th grade Uh, I gave two subject essays. I gave the one in maths. Uh, I think math two. So that was I got an eight hundred on eight hundred and physics. Um, I got a seven sixty. I wasn't completely sa- satisfied with the score, but I didn't give it again. 
amazing now what makes princeton princeton like all, out of all the universities you applied to it could be harvard duke why princeton over others matlab kya unique hai princeton mein uh so first of all it's uh, one of the smallest ivies uh, i think dartmouth is even smaller but amongst the big 3 harvard yale princeton it's the smallest it's also the most um i think well rounded like yale is more geared towards the humanities i would say um i don't know if that's completely 100% true but that's the general perception um it, it also has a really strong undergraduate focus so undergraduate education is the main primary aim for princeton their graduate schools are have like substantially fewer students it doesn't have a medical school it doesn't have a law school so its resources opportunities research opportunities everything is geared towards undergraduate students you know you will be the focus over there um another thing uh, unique about princeton is that it really focuses on research and scholarship almost all students except engineering have to do independent research work to graduate they have to write a senior thesis which is both intimidating but also really exciting if you think about it so because of that reason something many people might not be aware of princeton does not allow you to double major you can only concentrate or major in one subject and supplement that with minor which are called certificates at princeton another important aspect for the application is if you do a lot of impact in summer school so a lot of summer schools in us like wharton summer school yale summer school so how was your experience and how you got accepted to wharton summer school and and did it also help you in the application process uh definitely so i i think every summer i took part in some kind of summer program or uh, summer school you could say so in ninth grade i did this amazing program called wilac young leaders for active citizenship um which was really in the beginning stages at that point and right now it's a much bigger program um and that taught me how to think about civic action and taking uh, you know steps towards creating change in the community uh in 10th grade i applied for the wharton summer school uh it was called the global young leaders academy i believe they've renamed it now um so that was uh, and they have more specific programs now so if you're interested in like finance they have an on entrepreneurship they have specific programs now at that time it was called the global young leaders academy and i applied through they asked for you know some essays uh, recommendations from school teachers that was the application process after which you were selected um and i think that was a really amazing experience overall i learned a lot i worked with international you know uh, with in you know, a diverse team built a business plan and you know learned all of those essential skills that helped me later on when i was working on my own initiatives be it uh, a social campaign or starting or, um you know developing an app developing a business plan for um my app um and then even after that in 11th grade i applied for another summer program which was at nus uh it's called the international science uh camp i believe yeah so that was also really amazing i got to um you know the the lectures were great and that was more focused on tech science and all of those things that i had later realized that this is what i am passionate about and um i had some great opportunities through that summer program like taking part in, in a surgical simulation uh, that was really cool so we actually went to uh, the D yale uh, duke nus uh, like a uh, hospital and we could simulate carrying out a surgery that's just really cool anyway so um and in 12th grade i applied for um, the inspirit ai summer camp so with the, so in you could see that in 11th grade i was starting to um, gravitate towards science and tech in 12th i focused that even more and applied for um, you know this ai focused summer boot camp uh, that was conducted by stanford graduates and alumni in new delhi itself so um, again amazing experience i got to build close relationships with the mentors through the program and one of them later wrote an external recommendation for me um i i can't say how helpful that was but that was definitely a relationship that i um you know cherish because it was a a, a great mentorship 
and I learned a lot. So these universities like Princeton, Harvard, Stanford, they want to be one of the most impactful individuals to be competitive. So what do you think is the biggest impact you have done that helped you made it to Princeton? I won't, I don't know if I can pinpoint one exact thing, but the most important things in my profile, according to me, were some causes that I had consistently and passionately worked towards. One of them was menstrual health and hygiene, in which I started a community level campaign through my school in a team of four. And then we, you know, had conducted awareness building activities, created tangible change. And eventually I had the opportunity to deliver a TED talk about my work in New York. Um, Besides that, I also started, uh, I'm passionate about writing. So besides uh, being in the editorial board of my school uh, newspaper, I also started my own online magazine for high school students. And we received, um, we reached out to the global audience. We had um, contributors coming in from countries like Singapore and Malaysia, uh, the USA. So that was one of the things that helped. And I started that in 10th grade and built that up over the years. Um, I also am a Kathak dancer, so that is something that has been, um, dance is something that has been in in my life since I was, I think, seven or eight years old. Uh, So that was another one of those things that, you know, carried on, uh, showed my dedication and uh, passion for uh, certain activities and causes. Yep, and throughout my experience, I have also noticed that like these Ivy League schools look more for you to be an all-rounder and to pursue a passion properly. But just STEM heavy schools out there like MIT and uh, like UC Berkeley or CMU, they look for more numbers in terms of Olympiads, like STEM institutes. So talking about your essay, I believe that in your essays, you really need to show leadership and entrepreneurship to make it to these Ivy League schools because I, I believe these are the most important aspects. So you have any points that helped you in the application as well? Uh, so, I think it really depends on what the essay asks for. For the Common App, you don't really have to focus it on your major or any extracurricular activity also. Um, mine was through the lens of Reflections magazine, but I was reflecting on my experiences with uh, communication essentially, communicating with myself, uh, with my friends, with the surroundings. Um, that's a very vague way to put it but i can't really explain exactly what the essay was and it was also quite personal so um definitely try to write an essay that uh, delves deep into who you are and why you do the things you do uh, the college admissions counselor like uh, college admissions officers are reading your application to develop a deep understanding of you as an individual at their campus community and how you'll interact with other members of the community, how you'll participate in the class. So besides academics, essays are uh, are your opportunity to reflect upon your experiences and show them uh, how you will con- contribute as uh, a person maybe as how your personality will fit into their uh, campus so now finally what would be some of the final tips you would like to give out to prospective students who also want to make it to Ivy League especially Princeton but what qualities are like really important to make it to Princeton I would say number one identify what your qualities are what your talents are and what you are good at like identify your aptitude, the things that you really care about. Because if you're working on something that you really need to be invested in it, and it has to come from your heart, otherwise it's just, you know, going to stress you out even more. So identify things that you really care about and want to work towards. Identify what you're naturally good at and can develop further and start working in that direction. Next, I would say that instead of trying to do everything at once, um, Again, focus your efforts on some things like I didn't do any athletics or sports because that's not my expertise or area of strength. You know, some people think that you have to have great athletics and you have to have uh, performing arts and you have to have leadership, entrepreneurship, everything, Olympiads. So don't spread yourself out too thin. Uh, identify what you want to pursue and pursue it well, like achieve some degree, some level of accomplishment, a leadership position, some achievement in that field. So you can show to colleges that you, you know, this is something you care about, you've done well, and you've pursued consistently enough to achieve some honor and be recognized in that field. 
uh, those are my main tips and then lastly i would say that if possible try to get your standardized testing over as soon as possible try to get your grades down so that, so that you can focus on other components of your application and you're not stressed about um you know maintaining your academic performance alongside developing your extracurriculars you would have to balance both but if you get your standardized testing over at least some portion of it over in 11th grade that would be a great benefit to you perfect and uh, another aspect is like do you think counseling is important in like getting into princeton because in the history i have seen most of the students getting to these ivy league schools have some sort of counseling so do you think it's an important important part or like you can manage without it depends so if your school already has a counselor or, or a counseling program then i think it changes things mine did not um i did take the help of an external counselor uh so i think that helped me keep keep myself on track but i was also sometimes ignoring their advice so i'm doing my own thing that i really wanted to do so again i think you have to evaluate your own circumstances i know people who have got into princeton without counselors because they had a counselor within their school so they didn't really feel the need to go to an external one um and i know people who have gone to really expensive counselors traveled especially to like mumbai for their counseling so there are all kinds of people you have to see how much you already know about the process how much effort you're willing to put into independently research everything and get to know about everything do it all on your own or whether an external counselor is financially feasible for you and would be a help for you so yeah right. Awesome. So thank you so much Ananya for sharing your valuable information. I hope this video helps out all the prospective students to get into Princeton as well. Thank you. It was a pleasure having you. It was so great. Thank you. Thank you for having me.